Okay, hi everybody and welcome to Quarantine Cafe. I am here right now with a jazz pianist, a composer, Christian Lee. Uh, how are you, Christian? Where are you at and what is life for you like under quarantine right now? Yeah, uh, I'm good, man. I'm in Brooklyn uh, in uh, Leopard's Gardens, um, the beautifully named. Uh, and uh, quarantine's great for me, honestly, like perversely, you know, um, if we aren't taking into consideration, you know, the mass tragedy that's happening uh, on an individual level, it's good. Um, I actually, you know, during normal times, I'm very, very seldom in New York for more than a week at a time. Like prior to this whole thing going down, I had, I was just lamenting to some friends that I had not been in the city for more than five days at a time um, <laughs> since August um, of last year. And, you know, maybe, maybe that wish caused the whole thing to happen. Who knows? Um, but here we are now. I actually, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of break. And I think, I think a lot of musicians who tour a lot, um, and who are just like doing a lot of stuff on the road, um, are kind of secretly grateful to have this break and to be home and working on a lot of the stuff that, you know, like I had mentioned to myself previously, like, oh, if I only had the time, I would, you know, research this or this or this. And now here we are. So. That's cool, actually. So I'm going to ask you about that in a second. But before that, uh, I just want to ask, like, do you want to say a little bit about what we're about to listen to you play? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's been a long time since I've done a solo piano concert. It's been a long time since I've done anything in my own name. I just you know, do a lot of I'm a hired grunt, basically, uh, these days. and I do a lot of work for other people. And so it was actually, you know, really fun to kind of scramble to get something together because I don't really had material in place. Um, for that and so I had to figure out what to do and um, it felt uh, like um, you know it was just a really fun exploration to you know sort of see like oh here are these different sides of myself that I can maybe try to explore a little bit you know via various little songs you know like every song I felt like I was trying to explore a different part of myself or a different little you know thing that I had been thinking about um, and present it uh, in a sort of encapsulated solo piano form. And so that's, that's kind of the whole premise. Cool. All right. And let's, let's give that a listen and then we'll be right back. Right on. What's up everybody. This is Christian Lee coming at you from the quarantine cafe, which is currently America's largest and most metaphysical cafe. Uh, I'm going to play a tune by Nirvana called lithium, which is one of my old standbys for those of you who have been to all of my two, uh, solo piano shows over the past three years or so. Uh, I've played this at approximately half of them. Um, also, for those of you who are privy to good recording technique, I'm aware that this is not the best microphone to use, nor is it the best mic placement, uh, but this is all I got to work with, so here we go.
And now a reading from the New York Times. An Asian woman pressed an elevator button with her elbow. A man in the elevator asked, Oh, coronavirus? She said, Don't have it. I'm trying to be prepared. As he was leaving the elevator, he said, Don't bring that chink virus here. An Asian woman walked into a park and a group of mothers screamed for their kids to get away from her. A middle-aged Asian woman wearing a mask was going for a walk when a woman screamed at her to get away from her. A man spat on an Asian man waiting for the subway. A man spat on an Asian woman walking to her gym. A woman refused a coffee from a barista because she thought the barista was Chinese. The Asian man behind her started telling her how irrational that request was. She snarled, are you Chinese? He retorted, no, but your ugly ass knockoff purses. The teenage boy kicked a 59 year old Asian man in the back. A man chased an elderly Asian woman down the street with Puro. A woman punched a young Asian woman in the subway, possibly dislocating her jaw. On April 5th, an assailant tossed what's believed to be acid on a 39-year-old Asian woman in Brooklyn while she was taking out the trash, severely burning her head, neck, and back. In Texas, a man stabbed and cut a Burmese-American family, including two young children, in an attack that the FBI has called a hate crime. All right, and, and we're back with Christian Lee. Hey, everybody's hey, so, still with us. Yeah, yeah, he's still with us. <laughs> so, okay, man. So, like, honestly, that was, like, one of my favorite sets that we've, like, gotten from anybody. Oh, thank and you, man. Part of that is because, like, I don't know, obviously, like, you're a great piano player, but, like, there's, like, a real sort of, like, point of view in, like, everything you were playing in this set. And like, do, do you want to talk a little bit about that? How did you come about that? Like, where did you come up with all of your ideas for this? Yeah, I mean, I feel like um, there were no, at least in my mind, uh, no grand ideas behind any of the pieces. They were just like sort of representative of little slices of my personality. Like, um, you know, I love that sort of dead-eyed, um, nihilistic feeling that like lithium has, you know, like yeah. I love that feeling behind Nirvana and like, I love, I think Google translate is one of the most hilarious things that ever was invented. And there's just like ways to explore like dumb stuff like that, you know, yeah. it's like, cause this, it's all pointless anyways. I mean, we're quarantined, you know, like, you know, it's like, you know what, there's never been a more nihilistic time. And so, um, you know, why not just take this as an opportunity to explore some of these real, like, quirky little things that don't really have a place in, you know, if I were performing out in, you know, public for some swanky, you know, solo piano event, like, it would be a little bit harder to maybe pull some of this stuff out of my hat and have it make sense. But in this, in this context, where we're all at home, and you know, like we're used to seeing each other's living spaces on Zoom and each other's unmade beds. It's like, who who cares? You know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's interesting. Like you were, so you were talking before, uh, before the break, or I guess before the music 
I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, you were talking a little bit about how a lot of musicians who tour a lot or play out a lot are, are mm-hmm. sort of secretly grateful for this. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess the first question is, do you tour a lot? And the second question is, um, what have you been doing other than coming up with like this solo piano <laughs> set? Yeah. I mean, under normal times, I, I, I go in and out. I mean, like right before this happened, I was on the road a lot. Like I've been on the road a decent amount for me um, in the spring. Like I'd probably been out for a good month and a half total. Um, I was in China, you know, before this all went yeah. down yeah. Uh, in January. Uh, I guess it was technically going down then. Um, um, and uh, I was there in December through January um, in Beijing. Oh, cool. And in Beijing. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, That's right. Hang out with like with Terry Shea or Nat Of course. Yeah, all, the, all of those guys. guys. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I hung out with Terry a lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Terry Shea. Yeah, shout out uh, to Terry Shea. And that guy and all those folks. And yeah, it's a great scene over there. Um yeah. and so I was yeah, I was doing some work there and then I came back and immediately went on this tour with uh Sungazer, which is Adam Neely's group. Um, oh, cool. out uh basically that was just a small like tour in the northeast. We were opening for Moon Hooch. Um and um then went to India for a couple of weeks um, with Shib Saran and also Sungazer and uh, came back and then it all sort of fell to pieces after that. Yeah. Um, so I, I was out for a lot of the spring plus, or I guess the winter, plus just, you know, shuttling back and forth between here and Boston. Um, you know, I'm there two days a week for teaching at, yeah. at Berkeley. And um, so that all that made for a very, very, uh, sort of uprooted um, first few months of 2020. So this next one is based off of samples that I culled from YouTube by following the recommended video algorithm and uh, basically ended up in this place where it's just like videos of a bunch of kids doing random shit like hanging out with their friends or covering songs in fake Jamaican patois, which is something that I didn't really think that we needed, but I'm happy to say that I wasted an hour of my life there. So. Thank you. 
mentioned that you're a professor at Berkeley. Like, how's that transition been? It's been good. I mean, like, it, it was definitely weird at first to see it from the other side. Um, and you get, like, a different, I feel like as a teacher there, you get a different viewpoint than when you're a student. Like, when I was a student, I was getting a, what I actually now realized was just a small slice of life at the school. You know, as far reaching as sometimes your life feels as a student, it's just like, you, like, my community of musicians and um, their sort of hopes and aspirations and their sort of daily struggles and anxieties and everything, you know, that just represents a small, small portion of what's happening at the school. And to get sort of different slices of that is really fascinating. And, you know, Berkeley, I, when I was a student there, I thought like, man, like, how does it find, how does Berkeley attract so many awesome people? Like people like yourself, like with really amazing interests, like how do they end up at Berkeley? Like who, like somehow, you know, all of these people decided, yeah, I'm going to go to Berkeley. Like, that's the place for me. And like, then we all meet it at school. It's like, I found people that I connected with on a level that I never thought I could connect with anybody. And that continues to be true. Um, Mm. in the student body, um, I just think that like, you know, and I've had teaching experiences at other places and I don't know, like, I just continue to think that like, there's something about like the kids that I meet at Berkeley where I'm just like, these are really, really cool kids. And I'm glad that like, they're going to be representing the next generation of musicians. I think it's in good hands. Cool. Well, that's, yeah. that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> um, if, if, if it doesn't, if it doesn't pan out, then you can come, you know, find me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, what have you been working on during quarantine? Yeah. Um, well, I've been working on, so I had a couple of projects sort of, you know, in the pipeline that I needed to finish and those are almost done now. Um, I was working on this sort of like, um, I don't want to call chip tunes because that's a, little, a surprisingly loaded term. I don't know if you're like into like um, like if you fall chip tune politics, but it's like very very loaded. Uh, and so like you know they're like basically like chip tunes purists who are just like I'm not gonna call you can't call what you make a chip tune unless you're like making music under the restrictions of like the original yeah like, sound like a, chips and NES like or something. Yeah, exactly. And like, you know, obviously, like those chips were very limited in terms of their sound quality and also in terms of their polyphony. Um, And and so I understand that because it's just like you can't, you know, like it's easy nowadays for anybody to just like load up a square wave and like be like, hey, like I'm making, you know, video game music. And 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 so like what I'm making is not pure chip tunes, nor is it even close, actually. It's just music that was inspired by sort of like really simple geometric waveforms. I I can't even say that it's inspired necessarily by video game music, although I was a huge video gamer as a kid uh, and like on the classic consoles. And I'm sure that some of that stuff is in there. I wasn't specifically thinking of video games necessarily for most of it, but um, it was actually more just a creative exercise for me because I was like getting bogged down by like all these like high-minded, you know, silly high-minded concepts. And I was just like, what if I just try to make something with the least pretentious means possible, which is like simple geometric waveforms. Let's see what happens. Okay. So that's really interesting. So, so what does that actually entail? Like sonically, what does it sound like? I guess. Yeah. It sounds like something that's completely stripped of pretension. I mean, it's just like, there's nothing in the sound of a square wave that's like, hmm, like, oh, you know, like yeah. art gallery, like, you know, um, it's just a goofy, like sort of n- non descript type of sound. And it does have strong connotations, but it also feels liberating in the sense that it's just like, again, like this isn't something that people are gonna be scratching their heads about, or it's not something that they're gonna be like thinking too hard about. It's just a really simple, waveform um and it's a relatively pure waveform and like the somehow mentally that was really freeing just to be like this is all goofy anyways yeah um and that's been an idea that i've been exploring a lot just you know music has gotten real pretentious in some circles um and it's sort of a reaction against some of that stuff that i'm seeing in um like you know the scene that i was playing in a lot like this improvised music scene you know yep and um, yeah, so that's definitely, you know, that was one of the things I've been working on for a minute. Uh, and now it's actually because of the quarantine able to be finished. There's other projects as well. Um, so uh, Chinese is a notoriously difficult language to translate. Um, and the poetry especially. 
And I found this poem, uh, this old Chinese poem about getting drunk alone, uh, hashtag quarantine. And I threw it in Google Translate and the results were pretty interesting. Uh, and so I kept putting it back into itself uh, in different iterations of languages and the results were progressively more syntactically and semantically strange, kind of like a machine getting drunk. And uh, so here it is. Here are the results played with, uh, you go to my head. A pot of wine in the flower room. Discretionary no blind date alone. Toast to the bright moon. Opposite into three people. Neither will drink. The shadow follower is with me. For the time being with the moon will. Happiness and spring. I linger on the moon. My dancing shadows are chaotic. Wake up with friends. Disperse after drunk. Forever knotless. Phase a far away Milky Way. Put a jug of wine in the flower room. There is no separate blind date for discretionary delegation. Toasting for the moon. To three people. Don't drink. The shadow follower is with me. Temporary meeting with the moon. Happiness and spring. I wander on the moon. My dancing shadows are in a mess. Wake up with friends. Disperse when drunk. Forever. The distant Milky Way. Order a bottle of wine in the studio. There are no different dates for promotional days. Happy Moon. Three people. Do not drink. The shadows are with me. Monthly meeting. Happy summer. It was a flight. Dancing shadows are hard to understand. Wake up with friends. Particularly after drinking water. Forever and always. Milky ways. Grab a glass of wine. There are no other dates for the performance date. Good month. Three people. Don't drink. Color with me. Monthly visit. Happy winter. This is a play. Dance is hard to understand. Go with your friends. Especially after drinking water. Forever. Milk methods. glass of wine. Didn't play all day. It's been a few months. Three. Drink. Follow. Monthly monitoring. Good winter. This is a bird. Dancing is hard to understand. My dear. Especially after drinking water. Keep it up. Shooting system. Where can people find your music? And is there anything else that you want to say to the audience? Yeah. Um, well, so this album's going to probably just come out in Bandcamp. You know, like I have a couple of things on Spotify. I have this uh, project with this guitarist that I work with a lot named Mike Bono. Uh, yeah. And I have this project with this other guitarist that I work with named Kenji Herbert. And both of those albums are on Spotify, um, buried somewhere in the Spotify, you know, um, universe. But, um, and then, yeah, oh, geez. I mean, there's like so much random stuff that I've been on and so much stuff that I've been on that I'm really proud to have been on. Um, uh, and I mean, it's all on the internet. Um, all the musicians that I work with, all that music, it's up there. Uh, this album that I, this band that I collaborate with uh, called Mute with Kevin Sun. 
um, uh, Lim Yang and uh, Dion Suck. Uh, that album just came out. It's also on Spotify. It's all on Spotify. It's so easy to find. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. And is there anything else that you want to say to everybody? Uh, man, I hope everybody's doing well in the queue. And uh, um, thanks for you know taking some time out of your uh, isolation to, to be with us and to check out and support the music scene. It's really, really appreciated. I mean, a lot of us lost a lot of work. And so stuff like this is really, you know, mentally, um, really mentally, like, healing. Okay, well, thank you so much, Christian. Uh, yeah, thank thanks you, Cal. A- thanks, everybody, who watched the uh, Quarantine Cafe today, and we will see you guys again tomorrow at noon. Woo.